Reading is awesome. And so is my family. We have a lot of family members who have served in the military. And my granddaughters, whose daddy o serves in the military, have lived in foreign countries. They lived in Okinawa, Japan, and Tokyo, Japan. And now they're getting ready to move to another country. They're going to be moving to South Korea. And this book is a Christmas book about a girl from South Korea who has moved to the United States. And I thought you might find it interesting to see what it's like from her perspective. The book is called Yoon and the Christmas Mitten. Yoon and the Christmas Mitten. My name is Yoon. I came here from Korea, a country far away. It's true. Korea is very far away from the United States. All those children are probably American children who were born in the United States. And Yoon comes from a different country. One winter day, my teacher in my new American school read my class a story. It was about Mr. Santa Claus, who lived at the North Pole. Santa comes on Christmas Eve and brings us presents, the freckled boy told me. Hmm, these pictures? I think they're what Yoon must imagine as she hears a story of Mr. Santa Claus. In Korea, they wear different clothing sometimes at holidays and special occasions. And this must be what she's picturing as she listens to the story. My teacher let me take the Christmas book home, and that night, I showed it to my father. Look, father, I said, here is a story about Mr. Santa Claus. I told my father all about the man in the red suit. I showed him the picture of the red and white striped North Pole. I giggled and turned to the page with the sleigh piled high with presents. My father pushed the book away. We are Korean. Santa Claus is not our custom. I hung my head, but the boys and girls at school say he will visit on Christmas Eve. Little Yoon, my mother said, we are not a Christmas family. Our holiday is New Year's Day. We will visit our friends, the Kim family. We will have a fine meal together and we will wish each other good luck. She smiled. You can wear your red dress on the celebration day. <clears throat> I stomp my foot. I do not like that dress. The collar pinches and the buttons pop open. Mm. I stomp my foot again. My mother raised her eyebrows. Enough, Yoon, my father said. This is not respectful. Go to your room. Go. I hugged the Christmas book to my heart. I ran to my room, doing as I was told. Why? Did my father not like Mr. Santa Claus? Why did my father not like Christmas? 
Later that night, I sat on my bed looking at the pictures of the North Pole. My mother came into my room. Quickly, I hid the book under my pillow. Here, little Yoon, I saved some for you. Your favorite, she said. She put a plate of sliced sweet pears on the table by my bed. She smoothed my hair and kissed my cheek. I ate the pears and I went to sleep, dreaming of a village at the North Pole. She's dreaming. The next day at school, my teacher read us another story about a tall Christmas tree decorated with beautiful colored lights. How would Mr. Santa Claus ever find my dark house without colored lights to show him the way? My teacher showed us how to make popcorn balls. She took us outside to hang them in the trees as presents for the birds. Then I had a very good idea and I hid my popcorn ball in my pocket. Hmm, I wonder why she hid the popcorn ball. What's her idea? When I got home from school, I hung my popcorn present in the bush by our big window. Then I took some bits of bread from our kitchen and decorated the rest of the bushes. The birds would be so happy, they would eat the treats and fly, fly away to the North Pole. They would sing a song for Santa Claus. They would tell him where to find me. Little Yoon is here. She is here in America. When my mother went into the front room, she screamed, "Ee! What, what, my father said as we both hurried to see what was the matter. Look, look, there are so many birds. They are attacking our bushes, she said. There were big birds and little birds and blue birds and brown birds. They were pecking at our bushes and flying off with the bits of bread. <laughs> I clapped my hands and laughed. My Christmas bushes, I said. Presents for the birds. My father scowled at me. A large gray squirrel leaped into the biggest bush and stared at us. Eee! My mother screamed again. She jumped backwards. Then the squirrel grabbed my popcorn ball and dashed away with it. At school, the boys and girls talked about the stockings they would hang on Christmas Eve. Mr. Santa Claus would fill them with surprises. I knew my mother and father would not allow me to hang a Christmas stocking. After school, I found my mother embroidering. We will take this gift when we visit Mrs. Kim on New Year's Day. Do you think this is pretty? My mother asked. She held up the lotus flower on the corner of the new tablecloth. Yes, mother, pretty, I said. I learned a pretty song in school today. It is about a reindeer with a red nose. This reindeer is Santa's favorite. My mother shook her head. Yoon, she said, your father and I have told you we are not a Christmas family. We are a Korean family. Now dry your tears. If only my mother and father could hear the stories 
and sing the songs. Hmm, Yoon is learning so much at school that her parents are not familiar with, being that they are from Korea. Before I climbed into bed that night, I pinned my most colorful mitten to the bottom corner of my blanket. It would be my Christmas mitten. Santa Claus would come and leave a present. My mother came to tuck me in. What is this? She asked. Please, mother, please let me keep it there, I begged. It is my Christmas mitten. My mother sighed. After she left, I heard my father and mother whispering in the front room. Hmm, I wonder what they were whispering. I like her idea of pinning the mitten. She didn't have a stocking, so she used a mitten. When my father came in to see me, he asked, what is this I hear about a Christmas mitten? I lowered my eyes. When Santa Claus comes, that is where he will leave my surprise. My father shook his head. Yoon, I have told you, it is not the Korean way. But father, I said, you have also told me that America is our home now. Are we not both Korean and American? My father sat quietly for a few moments. Then he nodded. You are full of shining wisdom, little Yoon. We have named you well. You have given me something to think about. He patted my head and wished me good night. On Christmas Eve, I lay in my bed, looking out at the starless sky. Wispy clouds covered the moon. How would Santa Claus ever find his way? Maybe if I sing a Christmas song, Mr. Santa Claus would hear me. Aha, he would say. Here is that little girl named Yoon. So I hummed quietly. I hummed the song about the reindeer with the red nose. Then I remembered my school friends said Santa Claus would not come until I fell asleep. I closed my eyes and I wished and I waited. Sometime later, I awoke. I heard the floor creak and I peeked out from under my blankets. A shadow figure crept to my bed. The shadow figure carried a big box and laid it on the floor. My heart danced. It must be Santa Claus. It is Santa Claus. After Santa Claus left, I wanted to jump out of bed to see what he brought me. But suddenly, the shadow returned and reached for my Christmas mitten. I squeezed my eyes shut when it seemed like a long, long time had passed. I crawled out of bed and I slipped my hand into the mitten. Yes, there was something inside. But what was it? I went to the window to look at my present in the dim moonlight. Was it a folded fan? A pencil? I would have to wait until morning to find out. Look! Look in the box, I said to my father and mother. Mr. Santa Claus brought me a new red dress. A dress that does not pinch or pop. 
Well, my father said, smiling at my mother. And look, I said. I showed them the red and white stick I had found in my mitten. Mr. Santa Claus brought me a piece of the North Pole. Well, my mother said, smiling at my father. Aw, Santa Claus found Yoon, even though she had moved to a new country. That's great. When I returned to school after the holiday vacation, I wore my new red dress. I told my teacher and the boys and girls all about our New Year's celebration. I told them about our fine dinner with kimchi, our spicy cabbage, and about the dumpling soup and the rice cakes. I told them about the good luck wishes. Then I showed them the piece of the North Pole that Mr. Santa Claus had brought me. That is not the North Pole, the freckled boy said. That is peppermint candy. You should eat it. Eat it? I could never eat it. No, 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 I shook my head. Eat it, yes, the children said. My teacher smiled. Try it, she said. All eyes were looking at me. Well, maybe I could take a tiny taste. I unwrapped the red and white stripes and I took a little lick. I smiled. I tasted the magic of Christmas and it was sweet. Hmm. Do you know what she's eating? Yes, a candy cane. It's not a piece of the North Pole. It's a candy cane and they are sweet. You know what else I thought was sweet? Was this story about a girl and her family that were born and raised in Korea and then they moved to the United States and they experienced their first Christmas in the USA. And I know my granddaughters are going to move and they will get to experience Christmas in Korea one day. In the book we just read, Yoon learned the song, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer at school. Would you sing that song with me? Would you sing it with me right now? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Oh my goodness. Not only are you good listeners to stories, you're good singers too. That was awesome. And you know what else is awesome? Reading. Reading is awesome!